face and lately with the way the thing so Colonel shrines went the way of snipe squad maybe booty bay strip club will be able to turn this around keep a lead or maybe they'll pull a snipe on snipe squad and get themselves a game out of this series so towers of doom lots of different ways you can play this there's strategies with Abathur, the Lost Vikings, delaying it as long as possible, each shrines, altars, and basically getting yourself an XP lead as much as possible during that point. Be able to go and snowball game in your favor once you get you know some of the big things like your heroics and 16 talents. Booty Bay is all ready to go. We're just waiting for Snipe Squad right now to decide on what they want to do. Give it some thought. Um, it obviously makes sense that they don't want to just press ready for Towers of Doom without having a game plan here. Personally, I like team fight oriented comps so that you can go in, win the team fight, get get the point, control it, and get shots on the core. If you play it right, very hard to beat, even if if they are playing something like a TLV, Abathur, or something where they're trying to snowball through XP advantage. But at the same time, if the other team plays their XP snowball team comp, right, comp, and they don't get picked off, they'll win, or should potentially win. But Towers of Doom is a game where you often see it doesn't end soon enough for those kinds of comps. So you wind up going into it with a situation where you have some big turnarounds, potentially game-ending turnarounds. We've seen it at PAX. We've seen it in many other games uh, in Chair League. And so it wouldn't it wouldn't make me go, ooh, I've never seen that before. If someone actually went from, you know, 30 shots left on their core to all of a sudden two. But they still managed to win the game. Or even lose the game. So initial ban coming out is a respect ban by Snipe Squad. They do not want to deal with the cheese of Gorge into a portal, which is even stronger, arguably, on Powers of Doom. I'd almost say Booty Bay Strip Club would have been better off holding on to this strat for Towers of Doom, specifically since you can get into the kill zone and you're always going to get a kill, pretty much. If they weren't getting kills there, in certain situations, like in a Maw, uh, there's no way they're not going to get kills. Drop them into the kill zone. So Booty Bay Strip Club countering immediately with the false dad ban. But Snipe Squad is really taking their time to decide who they want to first pick here. Do they want that Zag again? Which, well, Zag is really powerful. Uh, and on a map that you can essentially do pushing endlessly due to the fact that forts and key, or the keeps go back and forth on both sides. I need to remake the draft here. Um, draft got messed up. Draft. Guys, let me re-get those links out. One. Just be another minute here. All right, we should be good to go now. This 
not be the same draft. Okay, there we go. Still had the wrong link up. All right, so uh, maybe we'll see the same bands. I think they agreed to have the same bands of... Falstad ban and Stitches ban. They have agreed to that. So they are all gentlemen and scholars having agreed to the same bands. So Zag is going to be the first pick from Snipe Squad. This is possibly even better than Infernal Shrines, or arguably even better than Infernal Shrines. You endlessly push, and you also have some really solid team fighting. But Booty Bay Strip Club is coming out swinging really hard for that wave clear. They picked up both Zul and Sylvanas here. Uh, I don't know how you're going to win a race against a Zul and Sylvanas. Now, you're going to win potentially the team fights here if you go and actually start drafting for it. Zul and Sylvanas, although good, you can easily win team fights against them. But. If you go into a wave clear war, I think Booty Base Strip Club might actually come out ahead at this point. Kind of like an arms race with Russia and China. It's not a smart idea. ETC is going to be picked up here. So they, it looks like they are going for that team fight. They can get a Maw into a Mosh. Very nice setup. I mean, he just walks on up. Moshes them, and doesn't matter if you have a Wailing Arrow because you're not going to get it off when the Mosh is coming out immediately after the Maw. So Snipe Squad probably will pick up their support here, I feel. Uh, there's a very good chance they'll pick up Oriole again just because she's really good and she provided some good value, especially if you can drop an Aegis right before the silencing Wailing Arrow comes out. If you see it come and drop the Aegis, and that person will survive along with come out of the Aegis without ever being affected by said silence. So Snipe Squad is once again really thinking hard about what they want it looks like. I don't see anything wrong in the draft. Okay, so they have opted for the Rhaegar. Uh, pretty standard. Nothing crazy there. They took it away from Booty Base Strip Club, not opting for the Oriole this time. But Rhaegar does have better wave clear. So if you're up against Booty Base Strip Club, you're going to have to get some form of wave clear to keep up with these two Goliaths of the wave clear world. Li Ming is now the band of choice by Booty Base Strip Club. They don't want to put a mage in the hands of Snipe Squad. I mean, at this point, Dag, Rhaegar, basically the world... Like anything in the world you want to do can fit in. I mean, ETC, Zag, Rhaegar. It's about as generic as you can get for comps. ETC, Rhaegar, ETC, whatever. I mean, doesn't really give away too much. Interestingly, they have banned out Chromie. So either they know Booty Bay Strip Club likes to do some crazy stuff, and Chromie being a sort of crazy pick here, or they're just scared of the fact that, well, Crummy is a monster for poking onto the objective, basically delaying it potentially forever, especially if she picks up the piercing sands. Hana and Malfurion have now been the other two choices. Without Rhaegar, Malfurion might be the second best wave clear support due to Moonburn, the 100% extra damage level one talent. And with Johanna, Literally, their entire team seems to be getting geared around getting that wave cleared as fast as possible everywhere, allowing them to apply pressure pretty much wherever they want. So Snipe Squad has opted for Kerrigan at this point, and so it looks like they are going to go for that gank and team fight comp in order to counter the wave clear. They got Jaina, Kerrigan, ETC. Zag, this is a very, very scary comp. Uh, pretty much, Zag Maws, and it's GG. Or even ETC Moshes, it's GG. Um, I, don't, I don't know how they're going to actually survive the Onslaught. They have Malfurion and Lily. 
maybe we were going to see something crazy like Twilight Dream and Water Dragon coming out here. So Kerrigan comes, comes out out, ETC comes on out, the Twilight Dream comes on out, and Water Dragon for additional damage. Because Booty Bay Strip Club is a fairly low DPS team. The Crusade calls. They're fair, a fairly low DPS team. I mean, they have no one who bursts. They have just sustained damage. But with the double support and Johanna, maybe maybe that's all they will need. They'll push into those, take them down one by one. Now, if um, means some good map awareness, they win. They'll just put endless pressure on the map and be able to take those keeps. And even if they lose objective, it's going to have very minimal impact. But if Snipe Squad executes their team fights and they get some good ganks off, Wave Flare is going to mean absolutely nothing for Booty Base Strip Club because. Well, they're going to be down members and they're not actually going to achieve much of anything. So we are now jumping into Towers of Doom with Booty Bay Strip Club. Map of choice being Towers of Doom and first pick going to Snipe Squad. Right now, after watching how Snipe Squad was able to claw the way back into the game, seize control of it, and then have a pretty convincing victory in Infernal Shrines, I'm more than confident they can execute on their current composition and secure kills that will prevent the wave clear composition, push composition of Booty Bay Strip Club from winning the day. However, Booty Bay Strip Club. Heroes. Did phenomenal in their early game. And if they can continue the pressure they have all throughout the game, there's absolutely no reason they can't win this. So we're going to get first pause immediately out of without them actually going down. All we've seen so far is Infest is being picked up again, Rolling Like a Stone, and Knight Takes Pawn. This is all pretty standard, especially when he chose Infest last match. Arguably even better on this match, since you're going to constantly be pushing lanes over and over. What I'm really interested to see is how these two sorts play. If they're going to go with an endless healing con composition where pretty much they their goal is not to win a team fight, it's just endlessly poke and have someone like Azul or Sylvanas pushing onto a keep for free. So, for you guys who are actually watching, who aren't in the game, I think is actually going to win this based off of these two comps. We have team team fight versus team push, push, push. So only got to wait for Discord issues to get worked out, you know. Discord is great, but they tend to have a lot more issues than other VoIP tools I've used. Maybe some of you remember the Ventrilo days. Maybe that's for your time. Ventrilo, TeamSpeak was the next big thing. Mumble being a little bit of the, the lesser known one that also gained popularity in Obviously, now we're we're in the age of Discord and Curse, and Discord is probably 
uh, by far and away the winner out of the two. All right, so they're jumping on Skype. Skype is pretty old school as well. I absolutely, positively hate Skype. I think it's the world's worst VoIP that you can use nowadays. So what I expect to see is Booty Bay Strip Club keeping either Sylvanas or Zul pushing lanes when an objective occurs. And if the objective occurs, they'll keep one person pu pushing, the rest of them poking, and potentially going for early keeps. Because if they can get an early keep, they can get those early pumpkins. And if they get those early pumpkins, they can get shots onto the core without even winning the objective. However, that is still a pretty hard way to win in comparison to actually, you know, going to the objective and winning those team fights. The battle begins. We're gonna see Ten seconds. what's probably gonna be a full DPS Lele coming out. We got the Five, Cloud Serpent coming on out, four, the Moonburn, Mercenary Queen. Four, so Mercenary Queen means she's gonna get extra begin. damage onto buildings and structures when those pumpkins hit. There aren't that many, but it will mean they push down structures faster. We got Night Spawn and Shade. Nothing crazy here. Finally, we got Conjurer's Pursuit, Infest, Wolf Run, Rolling Like a Stone, and Sharpened Blades. So Kerrigan going for even more burst. So, unfortunately, I forgot to say who's who on both of these teams. We got Aqualad on Malfurion, Damavarian on the Sylvanas this time. We have Hero on Johanna and TXZ on Lily with Snipe Squad coming on down to get their first kills of the game. And TXZ will be joining his team in the first dirt nap because Hero is going to be joining him shortly on the side. So this is exactly what I said in the beginning they we're going to be doing Snipe Squad, which is rotate for kills, pick people off, and if they don't have good map positioning, they're going to get some easy peasy kills and walk away with this game really, really easy. Snipe Squad. In the top lane, we got Tower Shield once again on that duel versus Castle Bravo, who is once again on Zag. But Zag is currently winning this 1v1, pushing all the way up into those towers. And we have Penith on Jaina, Tommy Shark on the ETC, with Diamond on Rhaegar, and finally Lucid on Kerrigan. So Damavarian and TXZ are playing a lot more safe. They don't know where ETC is, and after the last kill on them, they don't want to get killed again. The same thing with Malfurion. They all don't want that situation to occur, and with, with another pause arising, have a triple shrine, sorry, a triple altar occurring at this point. Triple altar is both the best and worst situation for a booty based strip club. It basically means there's a lot of places that they can delay, and that means they can get a lot of push in, but it also means that they can walk away snipe squad with a lot of shots on the core. And as I said, I don't I don't see the team comp booty based strip club winning team bites or winning them very uh, very well, where it's you know a clean like four for one kind of situation. I expect it more so to be a four for one on the side of Snipe Squad if they do manage to kill anyone on Snipe Squad. And as the game progresses. We'll see more damage coming out from Kerrigan, more damage from Jaina, and I don't know if they'll be able to keep up, but their pushing will definitely increase when 7 occurs for Sylvanas. As I was saying, Lily is going to be going for the full DPS build. I don't know if she'll opt for the Jugs, just for the extra sustain, but at the very least, I believe the rest of her build 
will be around or doing DPS with her serpent and just talents that provide more DPS. She might opt for the cleanse because there is Jaina if she gets Ring of Frost, which is very likely. There is ETC and there is Kerrigan. Multiple stuns, so cleanse would have you know, great value, especially with Malfurion. Maybe they'll pick up a double cleanse. They'll have to coordinate that very well. Otherwise, they'll you know wind up burning it. If they opt to go with there goes Tommy Shark onto a TXZ. They do manage to land the stun, and that is a dead Lily. Second kill of the game onto TXZ, or second kill onto TXZ, third kill of the game for Snipe Squad. And with that man advantage, it'll be going two squad and one for the strip club. Fortunately, the strippers aren't getting paid very well so far. They'll have to work a little bit harder, twerk it a little bit more, and uh, m maybe they'll come out ahead here. Power Shield and how it's now pushed the top lane pretty hard. He is taking a lot of damage, uh, so he's not training the best that he could be. Nonetheless, both teams are now getting their siege. Pumpkins have been picked up by... Snipe Squad, and now Dama Varian is the only one sitting there trying to take theirs. He can easily solo this at this point, and now we have Peanut and Lucid looking to potentially get Aqualad here. They go on to Aqualad, Lucid does get the combo, and Aqualad is going to be going down. And it looks like Johanna may be joining him shortly. Hero does manage to get away. That Unstoppable is good enough to walk away. But Diamond is now going to be giving up this Siege Camp. Or sorry, Dama Varian is going to be giving up this Siege Camp two diamond with double pumpkins having pushed in snipe squads domination and the ganks team fights is already showing to be significantly too much for booty base strip club to handle they aren't winning the lanes they aren't winning team fights and they're not winning the objective so we are seeing seeing mending serpent come out vengeful roots actually the choice um i'm not really a fan of that it does help delay a little bit more but i feel like it's a waste we got withering barrage eternal retaliation for a even more wave clear and jailers finally we are seeing frost shards and ice lance use of blades vicious acid spirit walker's grace cleanse double neck guitar a loudspeakers and the psionic pulse with a similar Mastery. Nothing too crazy. Seven has now been hit. We're going to see the cleanse on Lily and strangling vines for Malfurion. Um, I don't like this at all, honestly. It's not that high of a DPS ability and it's completely a waste of talents. They are coming on in and Tommy Shark misses the slide. Nice shoot from Damavarian. Walking away and haunting, waving the opposite way leaving him the ability to just get out. However, the bottom altar has now been picked up by Lucid, and it will now be a 5v5. They are trying to peel for Tower Shield, but they will not be able to stop him. Tommy Shark going on in, and there is Malf taking a lot of damage right now. Malf being the focus of a snipe squad. He does manage to escape. Tommy Shark having to back out, as does Lucid. So this is where the sustain of Booty Base Strip Club is coming on in, but Hero is going to be going down very shortly. Very nice roots coming out from Aqua Lad. They managed to secure ETC, but Tower Shield will be joining his buddy very soon. And now it is going very poorly for Booty Base Strip Club. It is going to be potentially... Grab that. It is going to be certainly only a three for one trade. So, Snipe Squad, this game has been pretty much absolutely dominant in every way. They're winning the team fights, they are maintaining the lane pressure, they're up on the XP, and they are about to get their heroics, which means that their ganks, which were already scary, are going to be absolutely insane at this point. So, 10, we're going to probably see the Ring of Frost, the Maw. Ancestral Healing, Mosh, and finally, Maelstrom. TXZ is in a very dangerous position right now. Should they rotate down on him, which they are, TXZ is seeing this, and he does manage to get back. 
in time. Hero is there, but this is six pumpkins coming in to the key. With six pumpkins, they are now onto Domavarian, and Domavarian is taking a lot of damage. He does manage to Haunting Wave away, but without anything to protect him. There comes the Mosh, capturing two members of Booty Bay. The Ring of Frost coming on out as well, securing the kill on Lily. And now, pretty much every ult is down for Snipe Squad, but they are up two members. But a team member advantage, there's no reason they cannot go and get another keep if they want to. They're setting up Getting ready to make a name, seeing if Booty Baby Club will once again fall for it. Unfortunately, it was already too low, and Booty Bay Strip Club had to give that up. They, they had to just walk away. There was absolutely no reason to say. Stun coming out from Lucid and the Blizzard only hitting one wave. Absolutely no way they're going to get Aqualad at this point, and they are walking away. They managed to take, take down the keep wall, or sorry, take down the towers and the gate. Um, okay, I guess they didn't get both towers. It's super low. And another altar spawn is about to happen. Heroics have been picked up. We're going to see a Jugs, Twilight Dream, Wailing Arrow, Blessed Shield, and Poison Nova. So opting for the Poison Nova. And there comes Tommy Shark. He does not have Mosh available. But the AoE damage coming on out is enough to start chunking both teams. And with the Jugs coming to heal everyone off, this is a restart of the fight. Tommy Shark taking a lot of damage. He is almost dead. There he goes. And he still does not have his match. But the Ring of Frost coming on in, securing the kills needed to turn this around back into the hands of Snipe Squad. Penith dropping the Ring of Frost, securing his team the win there. Absolutely critical as they were potentially going to lose that if the fight dragged on any longer. Unfortunately, they lost a member on Booty Bay Strip Club very, very early into that fight. Additionally, I don't I don't believe the Poison Nova was the most optimal one we've seen tonight. Uh, we saw some good Poison Novas from Tower Shell last game, but that didn't look nearly as good as the Infernal Shrines match. Tommy Shark and Lucy coming on in now. This is going to be very, very bad. Dama Varian and TXZ are very low, and Tommy Shark busting out that mosh pit to ensure the kill on both members. Not only do they get two kills, they get the Siege in bottom, which means they can now push once again on the bottom and get themselves another shot onto the core if Booty Bay Strip Club does not go and pick this up immediately after. And with two members down, they have absolutely nothing to fear. This is a free structure for Snipes. Power Shield doing his best to keep up the pressure, keep them in the game, but they are now down a talent here. We have Icy Veins coming out, the Protective Coating, Tidal Waves, Face Melt, and finally Double Strike. So with the talent advantage and how everything has been going, I do not see the Base Strip Club winning this fight without a miracle. They're down three levels. They're down a talent here. There comes the Blessed Shield onto Jaina, and this may be what they're looking for. The Wailing Arrow does connect, catching out two, and they do secure the kill. There comes a massive Poison Nova, but Johanna is going down. Their Poison Nova is doing as much work as possible. Lucy going down. Aqualad about to drop. It is now a three versus two situation. Tommy Shark just manages to survive, but Tower Shield has died along the the rest of his team. TXE is the last remaining member, and so that fight went two for four. Better than you could have hoped for it when you're down levels, and you didn't even have your 13, I believe, at that point. As you can see, we're just getting 13s picked up now. We're going to see the Shrink, shrink Ray coming on out, the Full Moonfire, Windrunner, Spell Shield, and finally Giant curse so this is going to be even more pressure they are going to get back their bottom structure it is possible that they come back into this game but it's going to be all about getting a pick 16 has been hit we've got northern exposure brood expansion earth grasp totem speed metal and aggressive defense they do manage to actually snipe 
zag in the top lane, which is exactly what they need. They needed that pressure, but they did lose structure now in the hands of Snipe Squad. So Tower Shield is going to have to go in, do as much as he can to get that back because bottom lane is currently being pressured. Tommy Shark whiffing with that mosh, and there comes the Twilight Dream with the Jugs follow-up to keep everyone alive. Tommy Shark getting that ancestral healing, but the Ring of Frost managing to capture both TXE and Aqualad. But nonetheless, they have swung this back into their favor, capturing Jaina and Rhaegar. This is exactly what they needed. They are now gonna hit 16, now gonna pick up their talents, and they are slowly, slowly, getting to the point where their sustain is too much for Snipe Squad to actually deal with. Unfortunately, this is a situation where they need to get two out of three. If they get anything less, they instantly lose. Boss is up in a minute, and that's another thing they'll have to be watching for. What they really want is to get all three. If they can get all three and get someone caught out here, then, well, maybe they'll win. We got Aqualad positioning down bottom. Uh, they need to position one over on their side to get to it and one person to poke in the meantime. So TXZ needs to sit here, babysit, and have everyone ready to go. However, TXZ and Hero are taking a lot of damage. Hero is about to be going down very, very shortly. There comes the drugs to keep Hero up. They do capture the first altar, and the second altar has also been picked up. They now need to go on in as a team. Jugs is down, however. They are going on in. But it is not going to be enough, and Tower Shield is getting absolutely melted. There comes the Poison Nova, hitting everyone on Snipe Squad. Penis is taking a ton of damage. Rhaegar taking a lot of damage. Lucid, Tommy Shark, but that is not going to be enough. They have captured absolutely zero kills here, secure none of them, and they all walk away, tapping that well, and this is potentially going to be fatal for Booty Bay if Tommy Shark decides to go on in. It looks like they are not opting to do that. They are down to two HP on that core, or two shots on the core, whatever you want to consider it. Shots on the core. They need to win every engagement from here on out. If they can get themselves a solid three kills, they can get themselves back into this game. They take every fort, they take the boss, and they can end it. However, Snipe Squad is looking for a bad rotation and they're going to go and actually fight them underneath their new structure. We got the Mosh ready to go and it is not going to be good enough because we got an awesome Twilight Dream coming on out and the healing from TXZ is enough and Kerrigan is the first to drop. This is exactly what they need. Hero being super aggressive, busting out that Iron Shield and they are now chasing on in. But it looks like they're going to play a little bit safer here take their kill, get the structure, and hope to win an altar. So they have man advantage for 10 seconds, and it'll be rough of, roughly 20 seconds before Kerrigan can actually get down to the altar. This is actually the worst situation possible because they're like, well, we'll start the boss, and we'll start the boss, and if they're not smart, we get a free boss. And if they are smart, well, Maybe we, we don't fight him. Domavarian, though, is taking a lot of damage. That Wailing Arrow doing a ton of work. Tommy Shark managing to get picked up there. But the Ring of Frost has been landed. Perfect Ring of Frost, but no follow-up. So that is a pretty big cooldown that is down. They now have a staggered death, and this might be the turning point. They are a little bit ahead to 16, sorry, to 20. And being ahead at this point, they got Serpent Sidekick, Tenacious Roots, Base of Fire, Imposing Presence, and Amplify Damage. Combination, they might be able to get a kill here, uh, but they should certainly be able to push down this structure with their superior Wave Clear. Blizzard being dropped, doing absolutely nothing there. Both towers are down, and they are trying to pressure this structure right now. Unfortunately, they only have 10 seconds before Tommy Shark is up. They're opting to retreat, which is a pretty smart move here. They couldn't maximize what they what they wanted and at this point they just have to be ready for potentially another team fight against Knife Squad because all they need is one altar. One altar and that is game. So they have a lot of shots to go. They need to get themselves two forts sorry two keeps and get two altars and all of a sudden that cuts off half the life of that core. 
and there'll be a lot more pressure on the side of Snipe Squad and potentially pressure them into making a mistake. At this point, 20 is about to be hit up, and with 20 about to be hit up, this is going to be a very dangerous situation for both teams. One, you know that they really don't want to fight 5v5, 19 versus 20, but they can also walk on up trying to do boss again, uh, and they have no global. You can see everyone on Snipe Squad is rotating up right now to go and do the boss. They actually are trying to get the top keep, maybe? No, they are actually on the boss. And so they know what's going on, and they are coming on in. But this may not be good enough. That boss is absolutely getting melted. And there comes the Mosh to zone him in the meantime. There is Domavarian trying to get in on time. And he is sitting on the point with the rest of his team. And they are actually melting Diamond. There comes the Ringer Frost, not doing too much, only capturing one member. And it is Hero, the worst person to capture. And the Poison Nova is doing so much work right now, managing to take down Kerrigan. And Peanut is going to be joining him soon. Castle Bravo having to jump into the night. Nidus and he escapes with Tommy Shark escaping as well. They managed to pick up the boss. They are now going to take down this keep and this can mean two keeps for Booty Bay Strip Club. Two keeps and they are going to also get the pumpkins pushing on in. Castle Bravo doing his best to do as much to pressure the bot lane alongside of all those infested minions which are going to just absolutely melt the structure as you can see they take down the first they're moving on down to the second and they have plenty of time to do it they need to get in there and get in there now there is no siege camp to get they have 19 seconds before that's up tommy shark is doing his best to protect against it he should be able to delay this fairly long before the rest of his team gets there to you know prevent the shots from getting on the core and now they are melting the mid they won't be able to stop the top, and so they can now rotate down to bottom, and bottom is at half HP. They will be getting shots on core if Snipe Squad does not get on top ASAP. They are down a member, they now have Peanut there, and they will not get any time, but they will have, once again, shots potentially threatening the core of Snipe Squad because they have picked up one of the pumpkin camps. It is 20 versus 20 now. We're gonna be seeing the improved ice block, the Endless Creep, Storm Shield, Bolt of the Storm, and Omega Storm. There are two shrines available. They clear out that camp extremely fast. They have Aqualad, everyone positioned in here, but they know exactly where everyone is. There goes the Mosh. The Mosh captures two, and they are getting melted right now. There comes the Poison Nova and Malfurion going down rather fast. Both the Wailing Arrow and the Silence is enough to capture themselves two kills. This is an absolute bloodbath on the side of Snipe Squad. Worst situation, but Tower, Tower Shield and TXE are rather low, but they cannot do it, and Tommy Shark has to bolt on out. It is now four kills on the side of Booty Bay Strip Club. They have turned around a comp that was getting absolutely obliterated by how well Snipe Squad had been playing this entire game and once they caught up in levels once they got themselves those talents and once they finally got themselves a slight xp advantage they hit 20 first they have absolutely turned this game around they can win this game at this very moment they have shots going off on the court right now they have the keep about to go down that is going to mean shots going down tommy cannot get the bottom this is this is a futile attempt to save his team. There will be shots going off very, very shortly. There's a wave being pushed in at this very moment. Boss is in two minutes. They can get the siege camp, but they are going to opt to get the structure. Smartest move they have. There's nothing they can do to stop this. There is no mosh available for another 40 seconds. They have Zag coming on up, Rayer coming on up, and Jaina coming on up. Kerrigan will be very shortly, but they is not going to be enough. There are now going to be shots going off onto the core. They can rotate to the top. They can rotate to the bottom. They can pressure wherever they want. This is the game of Booty Bay Strip Club. They're looking for the fight right now. This is potentially a giant throw. It is two shots left. There comes the silence. There comes the Ring of Frost. Poison Nova is decimating them. That is what we saw last game, and Tower Shield is just doing so much work. They just need to get one more. Lucid going on in, getting the Ancestral. Perfect Ancestral from Diamond, just managing to survive. However, the rest of his team is way too low, Snipe Squad, and they have to back on out. They're going to pick up these Siege Pumpkins, and with the Siege Pumpkins, well, they're going to pick up this bottom. And with the bottom getting picked up, they're just going to go get it really, really quick, rotate back mid, and then end the game. Because while they're not getting to the top, 
That's for certain. And there's one pumpkin who is marching right now to the core. They have to defend against it. And they have the mid lane to stop. They can go and get any of these altars. They need one person and one person alone to poke and prevent them from getting onto it. They currently have no one on their own position. They, okay, there we go. We got Tower Chill to his position for his own. We got the blind coming on it on Rhaegar, Lucid doing his best, but he is getting melted. There comes the Blessed Shield from Hero, and he is stopping them, and they are getting onto the enemy altar, and that is going to be GG. Booty Bay Strip Club has come from behind, and they are bringing this to a game three. That was beautifully done from Booty Bay Strip Club. Playing behind uh, almost the entire game, and then turning it around so so majorly they went from losing team fights pretty easily to winning most of those fights pretty and pretty close i'd say a lot of those fights had multiple members of booty base strip club below but the sustain from malfurion and lily with the additional damage they were putting out i mean Rhaegar is at half the DPS of Lili or Malfurion. So they contributed a lot of damage. You can see Jaina, Zag, Lu and Lucid. They were all putting out a ton of damage. They, they were out DPSing all day, every day. But the healing coming out from Malfurion and Lili, 25k, 79k. Enough to make up that deficit with additional damage. Along with the t Twilight Dream into Wailing Arrow, that is absurd. That is just two and a half seconds and another three seconds. But good luck trying to win a team fight with four and a half seconds of silence on you. If you can manage to win a team fight with four and a half seconds, if you can win a team fight with four and a half seconds, you're pretty amazing without using abilities. So you need to be playing auto attack heroes. You need to be playing someone like a Vala, a Rainer. People who can auto attack and just be like, lol, I don't even use abilities. So if you don't use abilities, that's the only way to counter four and a half seconds of silence. The other is to, well, kill them before the fights begin or blow them up before they can use the abilities or stun them out before they can use the abilities. But the problem is you have Malfurion who can be in one position. Sylphonis in another position. Good luck landing a Mosh because Twilight Dream comes out. There's there's no ETC slides. There's no uh, Mosh anymore. And on the other side, you got Damavarian dropping his Wailing Arrow and you are not going to land a Mosh or you're not actually going to get abilities to go off. So, I mean, literally place two people on opposite sides and it's essentially choose your poison. Do you want to get Mouth and get silenced by the Wailing Arrow? Or do you want to get Sylvanas and get silenced by the Twilight Dream? Because if you get Sylvanas, Malfurion's dropping some healing. If you're getting Malfurion, well, you're getting DPS'd. But we are now on to game three, which I believe is going to be a map choice for Knife Squad. I didn't believe that they would have won that game because they had been so far behind, but they pulled it together, Booty Base Strip Club, and it was just fantastic. Those team fights afterwards, they they just stayed on top of it. They maximized their abilities, and it, I'd like to give people MVPs, but everyone did so much work. Everyone across that team did so much work had hero just eating as much damage as possible getting those blinds off getting the poles we had damavarian getting those amazing twilight or sorry uh wailing arrows we had the twilight dreams coming out we had tower shield landing four man poison novas multiple props to everyone on booty base no one didn't fall behind and give up
as TXZ pointed out, if they did go auto attack, China has a blind. Johanna's blind would have countered that situation as well, which is a very good point. Uh, they also had Zul, and well, would you know, pretty much clobber them as well. So it's pretty much a choose your poison situation. Do you go auto attack and hope you don't get, you know, blinded? Um, honestly, I would have still gone for the auto attack, but it was already too late in the draft. There was no way to change draft that much to handle Twilight Dream and Wailing Arrow. I don't see it happen too much, uh, but you know. It was a thing of beauty witnessing the double silence.